champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here. <laughs> yeah. Super Bowl 54 champion Tyree Hill. And Come on. Welcome to the Sports Center. Yes, sir. And thank you guys for having me. For sure. Good to have, um, you broke social media, man, with your QB rankings. What? You did. I know you know it already. Get to that in a second. I want to start. <laughs> I want to start with receivers. Playing off the video we just saw, you, Waddle, and Odell Beckham Jr. Uh -huh. Where are you ranking that trio? Where am I ranking that trio? I know. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, where well, are you ranking that? Number trip. one, of course. Yeah, I know. I Come know. on now. Nah. Number one, of course. What do you like so much about it? I just love, man, like you got three different you got three different guys, obviously. And you got guys that can do like different different things for a different offense, man. Like when you look at oh, like a guy who has um expertise, big hands, can can run out the catch, can can do the jump ball, can run every route. Then you got Waddle who can do some of the similar things, but also, you know, get drunk off the yak even more, you know, because he faster than oh, I wouldn't like I'm I, Odell, I'm sorry for saying this, but Waddle is faster than you. Um so <laughs> Yeah, like Waddle can get drunk off the yak even more. Then you add myself, who's who's a Swiss Army knife. You know what I'm saying? So Waddle, I'm faster than both of y'all. All right, so I'm just gonna say that. Um, who can do some similar things just like them? Um, I'm still banking on Coach McDaniel to throw me some more fades. Mm -hmm. I've been I've, I've been begging for for those a little bit more, man. So um, yeah, man, like we we pretty much three guys who can do a whole bunch of things, man. Like, we just do it at a faster pace than other guys in the league. You, you kept saying uh, OBJ and obviously the biggest offensive addition that you guys have made to an offense that was already number one, number one in receiving yards. What specifically is he going to bring to an offense that's already been number one? Man, you got to think about this, man. Like, there's always key situations in every game, man. You feel me? Um, there, there are plenty of times that me and Waddle are always doubled. And if you add in a guy like Odell Beckham, who can you know defeat that defeat that one-on-one -on -one coverage? Like that's gonna take our offense to like another level. Like being able to stay on the field on third down is is very huge for us, man. So really looking forward to you know how this season plays out and how Coach McDaniel uses him. You uh, just let your teammates know how fast you were and how much faster you are than they are. Someone earlier this week weighed in on your speed. Four-time Olympic gold medalist sprinter Michael Johnson was on Sports Center a few weeks ago and was asked which athlete would make the best track runner. Listen to this. Oh, I got to hear this. The first person I think about with someone who talks about it all of the time is Tyreek Hill. Tyreek's amazing. He's quick. He's fast. You know, he's talked about how he could possibly beat Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt is not those guys that you see right there, those DBs that are not <laughs> able to keep stay with him. Usain Bolt <laughs> is the fastest in the world. Our track athletes at Grand Slam track are the fastest in the world. So Tyreek, while he's quick on the field and against those DBs, he would not be able to stay with our Grand Slam track racers. Uh, but he's got the mentality because you have to have that confidence and believe that you can, and then you've got to put the work in, which Tyreek does. But sadly for Tyreek, he would not be able to stay with our Grand Slam track race. Damn, you said you fast, but you can't hang, bro. Look, I just love the way he built me up and then <laughs> tore me up. <laughs> yes, yes, like, yes. Look, he has to work at it. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't think he can know I'm running with uh, any of our guys. Like, I was feeling good until he said that comment, man. But you know what? Um, coming from him, man, he's a GOAT, man. You know, he's a GOAT, man. So, um, obviously, you know, I, I, I feel like I can beat anybody in the world. Baby, I'm the cheater. I'm the one and only, man. You feel me? My kids tell me that every morning. Daddy, you the fastest person in the world. That made me feel good. So guess what? I'm going to keep telling the world that I'm the fastest man in the world, man, until I race one of those guys, that's which I'll never do. Yeah. Yeah. Smart man. <laughs> <laughs> like Floyd Mayweather, man. It's always about business decisions. That's true. You got to be smart. That's you know? true. You got to pick your opponent wisely. There you go. Right? You know, we're talking a little bit about your team, and let's talk about your quarterback because, look, he led the league in passing last year, had mm. over 4,600 yards passing. You look at other guys who've gotten a deal. Lawrence has gotten, already gotten a deal. Golf has gotten a deal, mm -hmm. averaging over $50 million a year. He's in the last year of his contract. Seems like there's a stalemate on whether or not the criticism is whether or not Tua can stay healthy. Right. Is it valid? That is not valid, man. You know what? QB1... Uh, Oos, like people gotta understand, like from from Tua's development and where he's come from and where he is now, like that should speak volumes to a lot of people. Like a lot of people can say, oh, he has, you know, Coach McDaniel calling plays, or, oh, he has X Y Z receivers, or he got all these playmakers. But at the end of the day, you still gotta get those playmakers the ball. You feel me? You gotta be able to, you know, you, you gotta be able to prepare each and every week, you know, with the same mindset, you know, knowing that you got crazy defensive ends coming off the edge trying to take your head off. You feel me? So 
like there's a lot that goes into it, man. And for people to like sit here and try to discredit Tua and say, you know, he's not deserving of a contract is 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 wild to me, man. Because a lot of like a lot of guys on the team understands his value and understands, you know, that we need him. Like we need we we need his leadership. We need, you know, his mindset. Like like the mindset that he brings into each and every week is there. Like it's like it's like Terminator almost, man. So. I feel like he should be one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league. You know, obviously save some room for <clears throat> me, but uh, we're going to get into that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Take all you want, but save a little bit for me. <laughs> save a little bit for me. Okay. All right, uh, all right. We, we, we teased the list. Let's get to your list that broke the internet, your top five quarterback list from this week. Okay. Here we go. This is, this is what you said, your top five quarterbacks in the league right now. You got uh, your boy Mahomes at, yeah. at, at number one, Tua at two, Lamar Jackson three, Dak Prescott at four, Baker Mayfield coming in at five. Why those five in that order? Well, it sounds like you said, when you said the word Baker Mayfield, it sounded like you wasn't too concerned that he, like, he wasn't supposed to be on this list. Well, I only said that because that seems to be the reaction that, has, that this list has gotten. It. Baker Mayfield, I know he was good, but Baker Mayfield, where's Joe Burrow? Where's Josh Allen? What Baker that? Mayfield, what the heck is wrong with, what the heck nah, is wrong nah, with nah, Cheetah? No, 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 look, look, look. If a lot of people read my Twitter bio, right? It says I love I, I enjoy I enjoy starting stuff and then leaving. <laughs> so that list right there. I mean now look, one and two is a lock. Right. Yeah. But okay. the rest on y'all can just do what y'all want to with them, you feel me? Obviously Josh Allen great. Uh Joe Burrow's great. All those guys are great, man. You feel me? You, you know, if you look at the landscape right now, it seems like wide receivers breaking the bank uh, here lately. I mean, Justin Jefferson just set set the new standard there with this contract he got at thirty five million. Uh, and I, I saw that you said, hey, look, you're happy that he, he got himself a mm -hmm. new deal. Uh, Jalen Waddle, obviously your, your teammate got a new deal here. When do you believe you will get an extension done? See, look, you put so much pressure on me, man. Like, Mr. Greer, if you're watching this, don't, don't listen to nothing I'm about to say. But you know what, man? I'm just, I'm, I'm just very, like, you know, glad the position that, that I'm in now, man. You know, and the reason I say that is, I know when, it, when it's time for me to get a deal, the yeah. Miami Dolphins will do what's right. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm very content with where I'm at right now. Like, my, my mindset and my focus right now is, you know, making sure that I'm able to help this team win, win it all, man, which is the Super Bowl, and I'm real content with that. You know, I'm going into year nine now. You know, um, money is the least of our worries right now. Like, the biggest thing right now is, you know, being able to, you know, Go, grab onto something that we can hold on to for the rest of our lives, you know, as a brotherhood, as a fan base, you know, as as an organization. And if and if we're able to do that, man, I'll be happy, you know, because we got a great group of guys on our team, man. Great leaders, um, great talent, obviously. Um, those guys added some great talent, like you said, on both sides of the ball, man. So contract here to come. Whenever it comes, it I'll be happy. So. You get real sentimental and sincere there. Yeah, he did. He did. Make a brother cry. <laughs> Put the pettiness aside. I know, right? I got sincere with it. I got, I, I got some of them in, in me too, man. Like, um, I'm doing a camp here tomorrow, so I, I'm preparing for that, being able to talk in front of those kids. So. Understood. Real excited for that. All right, you're fast, so we got some quick questions, quick answers from you. Call, call it our speed round. Your teammate Raheem Mostert claims he's the fastest player on the team. Yeah. So who wins in a 40-yard dash? Me. <laughs> Fast. Your turn, Brian. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, who, in your opinion, got the best swag, most style, most stylish guy on the, on the team? On the team? Yeah. Come in looking clean. I can't say Jalen Waddle. This dude be wearing pajamas to the game. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, it's got to be David Long, the, our, our middle linebacker, David okay. Long. David Long. <laughs> I feel like all fast guys dress like that because I dress the same way. Yeah. You wear pajamas to the game? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm not finna dress up just to take this right back off. <laughs> <laughs> Who on the team are you picking to play music in the locker room pregame? Hmm. Not too well because he going to play some reggae. You don't like reggae? I love reggae, but like before the game, I need to hear some Lil John or something. Yeah. Uh, mm. Let's go Jalen Ramsey. Okay. He's right. real good. Least favorite play, place to play? Mm. Like you walk in the stadium, like I, I, I would say the old Coliseum 
the old Oakland Raiders mm. Coliseum, those fans were real brutal. I mean, New England Patriots are kind of bad, but the old Coliseum was real bad too, though. I hated that place so bad. Oh, you a Raiders fan? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm just letting you talk. No, you, you sound like you was like channeling some memories in there. I didn't know if you were just going to break. <laughs> I hated that place so bad. <laughs> Last one. Give us your best Mike McDaniel impression. Mm, give you give you guys my best. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all got you guys kind of put me on the spot with that. Okay, yeah. let me see what I got here. I don't have one. That's it? I don't That's have fair. one. Oh. I don't have one. Oh. Only thing I, I, I will say this, though. I wish our coach changed change up his swag and start wearing them big shoes that he wore every day. Like, he's like five foot seven, and he wears like a size 13 shoe. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to get me paid, is it? <laughs> got to watch my words. <laughs> He's a Super Bowl champion, Tyreek Hill. <laughs> man, this was fun, bro. Thank you guys so much, man. Best of luck to you. Stay healthy. Have a great season. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs>
is being able to defeat the blitz. In 2022, and Woody, you brought this up, Shane Steichen meant a lot to Jalen Hurts. He had 10 touchdowns to two interceptions. Last year, that was five touchdowns to eight interceptions. And I thought it was uh, imperative that we that we see that change in Jalen Hurts in this offensive system. We've seen in the playoff game, Ty Bowles versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers say, you know what, we're going to all out blitz the Philadelphia Eagles because we know they don't have the answer to the test. They've shown that on tape all season long. And that's how they left the football season in 2023. That's exactly right. You know, when you Jalen Hurts got blitzed more than what we call cover zero, all out blitz, than any quarterback in the National Football Which, in my opinion, like, <laughs> That, that's, that's, that's a no. That's, it's that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful when you when a really quarterback is. of the caliber of Jalen Hurts getting blitzed that high. Yeah, it just tells you what the state of the Philadelphia Eagles' offense was last year. That's I exactly think that's why right. Kellen Moore was brought in to give Jalen Hurts more more answers to the test, and then complement with with Saquon Barkley being there as well. Sure, give him more outlets in the passing game, especially in those critical situations. So it sounds like, at least for the Philadelphia Eagles' purposes a year after making it to the Super Bowl, we'll put this all in the coordinators. You bring back in coordinators, and hopefully that makes the difference between what they were at the end of the year and what they were the year before. But their defense better be better. Because that defense was a... As a devoted fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, it's impossible not to get excited about the electrifying matchups that lie ahead in the 2024 season. Each game on the schedule isn't just a contest. It's a narrative waiting to unfold, a chapter in what promises to be an epic saga for our beloved birds. Let's dive into the top statement games that could define the season and cement the Eagles' place in NFL history. 5. At Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Week 4 the memory of past heartbreaks at the hands of the Buccaneers still lingers in the minds of Eagles fans. The sting of losing the final game at Veterans Stadium and subsequent defeats at Lincoln Financial Field have only intensified our disdain for Tampa Bay. The Eagles' recent history with the Bucs, especially those frustrating wild card losses, adds a layer of personal vendetta to this clash. Winning this game on the road would not only be a sweet revenge, but also a crucial morale booster early in the season. This is more than a game. It's a grudge match that resonates deeply with the fans and the team alike. 4. Green Bay Packers, Week 1 in Brazil The season opener against the Green Bay Packers is historic for several reasons. Not only is it the first NFL game ever played in Brazil, but it also pits two storied franchises against each other under the international spotlight. The Packers, rejuvenated under Jordan Love, pose a significant challenge right out of the gate. This game is a statement opportunity for the Eagles to show the world they mean business. A victory here would set the tone for the season and send a message to the rest of the league that the Eagles are serious contenders. 3. At Cincinnati Bengals, Week 8 The Bengals have been a thorn in the Eagles' side for far too long, leading the all-time series and handing us frustrating ties and losses. Joe Burrow, when healthy, is a formidable opponent, making this game a true test of our defensive and offensive prowess. Ending the losing streak against Cincinnati on their home turf would be a significant psychological victory and a testament to the growth and resilience of this Eagles team. This game is about breaking the cycle and proving we can overcome historically tough opponents. 2. At Baltimore Ravens, Week 13 Facing the Baltimore Ravens, a team with a rich history and a reigning MVP at quarterback, is a prime opportunity to gauge our standing among the league's elite. The Eagles' less-than-stellar record against the Ravens adds an extra layer of intrigue to this matchup. A victory in Baltimore would not only enhance our playoff credentials, but also provide a crucial confidence boost as we head into the latter part of the season. This game is a potential playoff preview and a benchmark for evaluating the team's championship aspirations. 1. At Dallas Cowboys, Week 10 No game on the schedule carries as much emotional weight as the clash against the Dallas Cowboys in Arlington. The Eagles' struggles at AT&T Stadium, 
particularly Jalen Hurts' difficulties, make this the ultimate statement game. The Cowboys are our arch nemesis, and breaking the losing streak in their house would be immensely satisfying and symbolically powerful. This game isn't just about the standings, it's about pride, rivalry, and overcoming past demons. A win here could be the catalyst for a strong finish to the season and a deep playoff run. In summary, the 2024 season presents the Philadelphia Eagles with numerous opportunities to make bold statements and solidify their status as one of the NFL's premier teams. Each of these top five games is a chance to write a new chapter in Eagles lore, one that fans will remember for years to come. Let the journey begin. Fly, Eagles, fly. Souza assina contrato com o Vasco até dezembro de 2025. Volante deve ser o próximo reforço anunciado pelo clube. Depois de Coutinho, o Vasco deve anunciar Souza muito em breve. O volante assinou nesta quarta-feira contrato com o clube até dezembro de 2025. A volta de Souza foi uma exigência de Felipe Coutinho. Os dois foram formados juntos na base vascaína e o Meia pediu ao presidente Pedrinho que contratasse também o volante para que ele fechasse com o Vasco. O volante voltará ao Vasco depois de 14 anos da sua saída. Revelado pelo clube em 2008, Souza foi vendido para o Porto em 2010. Ele passou por Grêmio, São Paulo, Fenerbahçe, al Rai Jeddah, Besiktas, Bejenguan e Basquicheir antes de retornar ao Rio de Janeiro. Nesta temporada, Souza atuou em 13 jogos pelo Basak Serrir, com uma assistência. Ele rescindiu com o clube da Turquia para assinar com o Vasco. Também pedido por Coutinho, Alex Teixeira vai assinar pelo mesmo período até dezembro de 2025. O meia atacante já preencheu parte da documentação e a burocracia será finalizada em breve. É isso, galera. Mais notícias continuem por dentro do nosso canal ou acessem o site oficial do GE para mais informações. Eu vou ficando por aqui. Valeu! Novo treinador do Atlético Paranaense. Martin Varini passa a ser o técnico mais jovem nos pontos corridos. Uruguaio de 32 anos chega para ser o comandante efetivo mais novo no campeonato brasileiro desde 2003. Veja a lista completa com o top 5. Destaque da nova geração foi assim que o Atlético Paranaense avaliou o novo comandante do time de futebol profissional. Além do desafio de comandar o furacão, Martin Varini já chega ao futebol brasileiro estabelecendo um novo marco. Com apenas 32 anos, ele assume o posto de treinador mais jovem de um time da Série A desde o início dos pontos corridos em 2003. O uruguaio ainda não estreará nesta quarta-feira 
contra o Bahia. O auxiliar e interino Juca Antonello segue à beira do gramado para esta partida. A partir daí, o comando passa a ser de Varini. Ele, no entanto, só estreará no Campeonato Brasileiro no dia 21 de julho. Isso porque o duelo contra o Fluminense pela 17ª rodada foi adiado por causa do confronto do Furacão contra o Cerro Portelo pelos playoffs da Sul-Americana. Com isso, o Atlético volta a campo somente no dia 21 de julho para encarar o Red Bull Bragantino fora de casa no Nabi Abishadei. No dia deste duelo, Varini estará com 32 anos, 11 meses e 19 dias, o mais novo treinador de um clube da elite desde 2023. O uruguaio deixa Marquinhos Santos para trás. Pelo Coritiba, ele estreou como técnico efetivo em 8 de setembro de 2012 em uma vitória por 3 a 0 sobre o Flamengo. É isso, galera. Mais notícias continuem por dentro do nosso canal.